We're going to go ahead and get started. I wanted to welcome everyone to tonight's webinar. I am your host, Dr. Lauren Levine, and this is a great webinar. I'm so thrilled to have uh, such a fantastic turnout. We had uh, close to 800 people that are registered for the webinar. Uh, obviously, this is a very popular topic. Uh, you know, we, we tend to fill these, these webinars up. Uh, a lot of people are here and logging in. I'm only going to speak for about a minute or two. I want to make sure that Dr. Nazarian can speak for as long as he would like. Most of you have been on these webinars in the past, so you know how the, the format is. You've got a little control panel on your screen, the GoToWebinar control panel. You'll go ahead and type your questions in there. Um, we try to get to as many questions as we possibly can. With this many people, we're not going to get to all of them. I'll be upfront about that. Uh, we don't want to keep everyone here until midnight, but uh, we, we try to get to the bulk of them, and I go through them as, as they're coming in so I can combine a few of them as, as well. Um, in the next couple of days, you'll get a few things. We record this webinar like we do all webinars, so if for some reason you can't stay until the end, don't worry about it. Uh, the recording normally goes out within the next day or two. Um, I personally wanted to thank Golden Dental. They are sponsoring the, this webinar. We've done a lot of webinars together. You know, if you are a dentist, you are, I'm sure are very familiar with Golden Dental. Um, they have just an unbelievable commitment to dental education, and I thank them for that. As part of that, they are able to provide CE credits if you are attending live. We have no way of tracking if somebody watches this uh, during the recording, but if you're here and you stay on, you will get a C certificate. Please give them a couple of weeks to handle that, especially this time of year. It, it gets really busy for all of us, uh, but uh, you know, even when you have 800 people that want CE forms, it's gonna take a while to, to get those all sent out. So with that being said, uh, I wanted to go ahead and introduce our, our special speaker for this evening, which is uh, Dr. Aaron Azarian. Dr. Nazarian maintains a private practice in Troy, Michigan, with an emphasis on comprehensive and restorative care. He is a diplomat in the International Congress of Oral Implantologists. His articles have been published in many of today's popular dental publications. I've seen a bunch of them. He's consistently listed as a top dental educator. He's conducted many lectures and hands-on workshops on aesthetic materials and dental implants throughout the U.S., Europe, and, and Asia. He's on the faculty for Amplified Dental Training, which teaches atraumatic extractions, grafting, and immediate dentures. And he also founded the Ascend Dental Academy, which teaches all aspects of dental implants. So without further ado, we are thrilled to have you here. Welcome. Great. Thank you, Lauren. And thank you for having me. So tonight's webinar, we'll be talking about achieving your practice growth with extractions, grafting, implants, and also by popular demand, posterior restorations. So let's quickly take a look and we'll see what we're gonna talk about today. These are the types of patients that are presenting to the dental office today. And it, you don't have to be in the inner city to get patients like this. I'm in the suburbs of Michigan and uh, not only do we get failing teeth that have crowns that are breaking off due to recurrent decay, but we get entire mouths that have periodontal disease, have extreme wear or mobility because of uh, bruxism, and we also have uh, failing crown and bridge restoration. So I think everybody in the audience can find uh, one of these cases is similar to what they experience within their practice. Well, we know, according to the literature, age is directly related to every indicator of tooth loss. So as the baby boomers increase in size and number, so will the need to have teeth extracted. But it's not only the mature population, we also have the younger generation of patients, and whether it's soda or energy drinks or pop, we see deterioration of these, of these teeth in these young individuals. We also um, see the increase in the use of methamphetamine. So it's important to know that there is a growing demand for extractions and grafting within your practice. And hopefully after tonight, you'll feel comfortable to try and attempt to get some of the straightforward extractions using an atraumatic method, but also to address some of the other areas of concern that uh, we can help provide solutions for, for our patients. 
Well, even some of these cases, one would think, well, this person's not going to be able to afford dental implant treatment. And it's important to note that we need to treat all our patients the same. And we all know the saying, usually the patient that looks like they can afford this treatment can't, and the ones that look like they can't can. But I say, let's treat everyone the same and give them a variety of different options on how to restore, restore their mouths to proper form and function. And so usually when I give a treatment plan, I'll give options A, B, and C. A being the best, B being like the middle, and C being the most economical. So in this case, this would be treatment A, which is sort of the Cadillac, which is full mouth reconstruction with dental implants, where B may be something like an overdenture, and option C may just be dentures. So hopefully, Tonight, you'll get a feeling for all these different treatment options that are available. So we already know that there's a huge potential within your practice for this. We'll also touch upon a little bit of restorative dentistry in this uh, webinar as well, because I always get questions um, about the different types of restorative materials that I may be using or matrix bands and things of that nature. So I want to briefly touch upon that as well. In the new year, we'll be doing another webinar with Dr. Levine um, and really focusing on the restorative part, but I do want to touch upon it a little bit today. Well, what's our goal this evening? Today, my goal is to show you how to tap a growing market of patients that are needing comprehensive treatment. It may not just be extractions and grafting, but possible dental implant placement and restorations. Within my practice, we offer IV sedation. So it's not uncommon to have a patient sedated, extract several teeth, do restorations on some other teeth on the same patient, and then also maybe a root canal here or there or a crown preps. So I want to identify these different areas of the variety of different services we can provide for our patients. Most importantly, we do want to show you the techniques and the instruments that we do use, um, especially what I use within my practice, to atraumatically extract teeth in a very predictable and efficient manner. We're also going to go over some restorative, and one of the new and exciting materials that are out there from uh, Wagofil is the zirconia-infused posterior composites. So it's a composite restoration that's 40% filled with zirconia. And we all know, a lot of us have already switched over to full zirconia crowns and restorations, and we know the benefits of zirconia. Imagine putting zirconia um, particles within a composite restoration. So not only do you have strength, but you have less shrinkage and less wear. Also, we'll be touching upon a little bit of grafting following extractions and some clinical case demonstrations. And then lastly, I do teach quite a bit of implants, so I do want to touch upon how we plan for dental implants using uh, guided surgery and how we deliver precise implant placement. So let's take a look at this first case, extraction and grafting with delayed implant placement. This patient presented to my practice uh, complaining that the crown and core restoration broke off several weeks prior. Um, although the patient didn't have any pain, they knew that this area needed to be addressed because there was a foul odor coming from this uh, broken off uh, root tip. So this patient definitely want to get this root extracted and have this area replaced. Well, we can see distal to this area that the patient already has some splinted crown restorations. And anterior to it, we see a virgin tooth. So we definitely want to try to place an implant as compared to increasing the size of any type of restoration um, being a four unit bridge as compared to two splinted crowns. So our goal is to take this root tips out as a atraumatic as possible. So when I take a tooth out, I want to do it as ideal as possible. And when I looked online to find the definition of an ideal tooth extraction, I found this. And this is the painless removal of the whole tooth or root 
with minimal trauma to the investing tissues so that the wound heals without compromise and no post-operative prosthetic problem is created. And so whenever I take a tooth out, I wanna keep this in the back of my mind to make sure that I take this tooth out entirely without trauma to the surrounding tissues, make sure that it's painless, obviously, and that I don't compromise the health of anything. And if I do graft, that I will make sure that this area, the foundation is built as ideal as possible. So when implementing atraumatic extractions within my practice, the first thing I think of is the physics forceps. And the physics forceps I've been using in my practice for over 11, actually 12 years now. And the physics forceps works like a modified class one lever to remove the tooth. So the bumper acts as the fulcrum, where the beak, as compared to a, a class one lever being under the weight, actually hooks the tooth and levers the tooth out of the socket. And so we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail. So when implementing the physics forceps, whether it's the anterior forceps or posterior forceps, we want to follow one basic thing, and that is to ensure that the beak is positioned on the palatal or lingual aspect of solid tooth. So if we see that there's decay, we want to ensure that the beak is placed apical to that so that it is on solid tooth structure. Otherwise, if the beak of the forceps is on the decayed portion of tooth, once you try to lever that tooth out of the socket, it's just gonna crumble and you're just gonna sort of rake the decay off the tooth. So it's imperative to place the beak on a solid tooth structure. If for some reason, the solid tooth structure is within the level of the uh, height of the free gingival margin or below the level of bone, then at that point we would take a small burr and create a little trench between the bone and tooth so that the beak can actually be positioned on solid tooth structure. Once that's been accomplished, we'll take the bumper and try to position it as apical as possible into the mucogingival fold. The longer the distance from the beak to the bumper, the better the lever. So the closer the bumper, in other words, if we weren't able to go as apical as in the schematic, then the lever is not as efficient. However, it will still work, but you just have to wait longer for the physics forceps to work. So once we've positioned the beak and the bumper, we want to do a small rotational positioning or action uh, using a wrist action without squeezing heavy. So you wanna squeeze enough that the forceps isn't going to open up as you try to rotate uh, along the bumper, but you don't wanna squeeze so hard like you do with traditional forceps so that you don't break that buckle portion of bone. So you, we don't want to break the buckle plate of bone. And as a general dentist who places a lot of implants, our goal is always to not break that buckle plate of bone. So the physics forceps is used in all our extractions um, to try to lever this tooth out as atraumatic as possible. Now, depending on the quality of bone, if all of a sudden you're trying to leverage a tooth out of, let's say, D1 or D2 bone, then it may not be as ideal as leveraging it out of type three or type four type bone. So in those cases where the bone is not as flexible, then at that point we'll section the roots and treat each root as an individual tooth. So in the lower arch, we actually will usually routinely section the tooth and take out the mesial root and then the distal root as if they were individual teeth. Once you've made that rotation and you allow the tooth to loosen up, then at that time you can go ahead and use in this case, a 150 and a lower, a 151, or Golden Dent has a great device which is called a tooth delivery forcep that will be used to further remove the tooth from the socket once it's been loosened using the physics forcep. So here you can see the root is totally intact. So we see both roots are intact 
in the past we would have to definitely section this. Um, if you were trying to elevate, you notice the mesial and distal had severe decay. So that would be a very complicated procedure. But utilizing the physics forceps, we were actually able to remove these uh, roots in one and create uh, a nice area to place bone graft material. Now, Osteogen plug is a great material. It comes in two sizes. Um, and what this is compromised of, it's a bioactive resorbable calcium appetite synthetic graft, but it's suspended within a bovine Achilles tendon collagen matrix. So although it may look like a collagen plug, it's much stiffer than a collagen plug, and it really provides a great scaffold as well as the catalyst for the host bone to generate within the socket. It comes, as I mentioned, in two sizes. So you have a large, which is a 10 by 20, and you actually also have a slim, which is a 6 by 25. So in this particular case, I decided to go with a large and to cut it in half. Now, when I make the cut, I will only take it up two-thirds the way. And the reason for that is that coronal portion we want as one piece as much as possible so that when you put this within the socket, the coronal portion is as one. And so when you suture it, you don't find that this, uh, if these pieces were separate, they would come out much easier. But if the top or coronal portion is as one, we find it doesn't, uh, you don't lose the graft. So this is one thing that I definitely recommend and shape it like the root. So if you have to squeeze that a little bit to make that look more like the roots of the tooth that you removed, I definitely recommend that. So you can see it's very atraumatic. We've placed the grafting uh, material within the socket. So you remember it was almost like a little wishbone. We placed uh, the osteogen plug within the sockets and the coronal portion is as one. And then at that point, we'll go ahead and suture the grafting material in. Now, the unique property of this product also is
actually can be immediately loaded. In fact, there's more than 800 scientific reports and papers that talk about this. So this is something that's an objective reading. Plant and plug. A zirconia crown and so this patient was able to leave with an immediate restoration on his implant so the goal this evening is to show how you can be comprehensive and take your patient from A to Z within your dental practice so if we look at the storyboard of this patient in the top left ideal for implant placement and Real quickly, we identified tooth number 30 and 31 as having crown restorations. So the first thing we're going is not the most ideal endo that we would prefer in a patient. We know. right at the cervical portion of these crown restorations. So there must have been some recurrent decay that the previous dentist tried to correct by placing cervical amalgam restorations. So we all know that a 2D X-ray is not going to be enough to identify which tooth needs to be extracted, if the tooth has a vertical fracture, or to be able to see it three-dimensionally. So within my practice, we have the CS8100 3D from CareStream Dental. And not only can we get 2D images from this, but we can also get 3D. So looking at the software from CareStream, the first window is a panoramic window. The upper right, we see an axial view. The second one down, we see a cross-sectional view. And lastly, in the lower right box, we see the three-dimensional view. So upon further examination, we identified that tooth number 30 actually has a vertical fracture. And we're able to identify that further by probing. When we probed around both teeth, all of a sudden, the mesial buccal line angle of tooth number 30, the perio probe went down about 10 or 11 millimeters. So that was also another indication of a vertical fracture. Upon the cross-sectional view of number 31, we found gross decay at the distal buccal line angle. So at that point, our goal was to explain to our patient that in fact, both these teeth will need to be extracted. They'll have a much better prognosis as compared to trying to play hierodontics on these teeth. So, one um, model that I like to use in my practice is the DemoDent. The DemoDent patient education model allows us to identify different scenarios to our patient, whether it's occlusal or interproximal decay or tartar buildup on the um, other side of this model, whether there's recession or a failing amalgam restoration or crack tooth syndrome, and lastly, a core and crown restoration. As you can see, the core is depicted by the blue, and then the crown obviously um, is removed. So in this scenario, we explain to the patient, not only do you have a fracture that's extending down the long axis of the tooth, but when we take these teeth out, 
we definitely want to do some type of socket preservation so that the walls of the socket don't cave in and we can build the foundation for future implant placement. The last thing we want is to not graft and then have the walls of the socket cave in and now the patient would have to undergo more extensive grafting procedures. So really, if you're able to create a nice atraumatic extraction when implementing the physics forceps, you'll find that a four wall defect, which is equivalent to socket preservation, right? All the walls of the socket are intact and you only have to place grafting within that socket is really the best scenario, um, not only for you, the provider, but also for the patient. So the first thing we did is anesthetize this patient. And our goal is to remove the crown restoration so that we can section these teeth and deal with each root individually as if they were separate teeth. Because if we try to remove a lower molar without sectioning and the patient's got D1 or D2 bone, then it's more common you'll break a root. So our goal is to remove the crown and section the tooth. So here in this photo, you can see we were able to use the WAM key and remove the crown very easily. And you can clearly see the amalgam restoration at the cervical portion. And it looks like they may have used some glass anomer as well um, at the cervical portion of that tooth. So what our goal is, is to use the number 12 burr, which is a carbide burr that we utilize. This is a burr kit that I created and Golden Den offers this. We section the teeth. And so we're gonna go right through the furcation area. We'll take an X-ray to confirm that we've um, bisected this uh, root uh, into two pieces, ideally. And so here we can see the follow-up X-ray that utilizing this burr, we actually able to go through all the way. And then at that point, we'll use something like the wedge. The wedge is an instrument that is great as a pre-step to your atraumatic extraction process, especially if the teeth are in D1 or D2 type bone. And it works not only like a luxator, but you're able, because the tip is very sharp, to place that down um, almost like a periotome. But unlike peritomes of the past that become very flimsy, here we have a large um, elevator or luxator type of handle. So we have full complete movement when wedging this between the tooth and the bone. Once we've gotten some movement, we'll implement the physics forceps. And since this is a lower tooth, we'll use the lower universal. And here you can see the rotational movement that I'm using with only wrist action. And you can see the mesial root is already starting to um, evolve from that socket. And so here we can see we've removed the full mesial root. We're gonna do the same thing with the distal root, apply the beak of the physics forcep on a two structure, solid two structure, place the bumper as apical as possible into the vestibular area, and then without squeezing hard, just rotating that root out of the socket using the bumper as the pivot point. And so here we can see the distal root removed. So both roots are removed atraumatically. Notice the buccal plate is still intact. In fact, the inner septal bone is still intact. So this is ideal when um, placing grafting material so that we have an ideal foundation laid out for implants later on. If we take a look at tooth number 31, after we've removed the crown using the WAM key, we can clearly see the amalgam restoration at the cervical portion. And then if you look closely at the distal buccal line angle, you can see that there's gross decay at the distal portion. In fact, if you also look, the core uh, there actually is not much of a core. It's all gutta percha. So this tooth possibly may have not fractured had there been a better core restoration. Nevertheless, we know that this tooth does not have a good prognosis. So our goal um, is to also extract this tooth. So again, like we did with the previous tooth, 
We're going to section that tooth into two pieces. And then, utilizing the physics forceps, we're going to go ahead and remove each root as if it were a separate tooth. So here with this slide, we can see the section is right on. We're utilizing the physics forceps, applying it onto solid tooth structure, and rotating that root out of the socket. We get the mesial root out, so we position the beak onto the distal root. And here we can see we've accomplished taking all four roots or two teeth without breaking any buckle plates. Well, we'll always take an x-ray to confirm that everything is out of the socket. And then at this point, you can take your grafting of uh, your choice and place it within the socket. Now, in this case, I wanted to illustrate using a different type of grafting material. Some of you may be used to using a particulate graft. So Golden Dent has a very nice particulate graft with mineralized and demineralized cortical and cancellous chips. So we could have easily used the osteogen in this case, but I did want to illustrate a variety of different bones this evening. And here you can see we've covered it with a guide uh, as well. Okay, or a membrane, I should say. Using sutures, we've positioned the membrane so that it goes apical to the height of bone, two millimeters on either side. And then I've also created some apical mattress sutures to prevent tension uh, from the cheek when the patient does function um, so that area doesn't get a suture line opening. Looking at the x-ray, we can see that the grafting has been positioned to the height. Actually, it's been a little overfilled, but we know we won't gain vertical height, but actually this will all turn over to the host bone. So if we look at the storyboard of this patient's case, we see number 30 and 31. Notice in the middle slide how we sectioned number 30, and then we extracted that. Then we did the exact same thing for tooth number 31. We identified that all the components of the roots are all removed, and then grafting has been placed. Just one week later, we can see how the area is healing. And then at the four-month post-op, we can actually see the ridge is healed very, very nicely. And this is what the radiograph looks at four months. So the next thing we'll do is take a CBCT using our CareStream Dental 8100. And using the software in the uh, CS8100, we can actually pick the implants of choice. In this case, we use the Engage from OCO Biomedical. These both are five by 10 implants. And so we can actually put um, virtual crowns on these so they, these are positioned as ideally as possible. So at this point, we'll take a Sildenot impression, or if you want to use your intraoral scanner, you can use that as well, and forward it to any company that you would like to make surgical guides. Here you can see we've sent it to 3DDX, and they've come up with a treatment plan with their software. So this is tooth number 30. And you can see mesial distally, there's ideal bone. And then if we took, take a look at tooth number 31 area, we have ideal bone because of our grafting. And notice we're going to avoid this undercut. As we get to the posterior portion of the mandible, we notice more and more uh, chances of having an undercut. Notice they have the virtual crowns. So this is a prosthetically driven treatment plan. Our goal when placing implants is not to just place the implants haphazardly and let the lab figure out where to put the crowns, but in fact, plan the implant placement with the virtual crowns so that these are positioned in the most ideal um, areas. So the first thing I like to do is once we've gotten a surgical guide back, before I even numb the patient, is confirm that the surgical guide is seated entirely. And so if you look, you can see in the anterior portion where you see some windows to confirm that this is seated. I'll actually even take a PA to confirm that the angulation is 
ideal and that our guide is seated entirely. So at this point, I'll anesthetize the patient. I know that the surgical guide's going to fit. I've tried it in, I've taken a radiograph. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and anesthetize the patient. We'll infiltrate the area and blanch the tissue out. Now, when we blanch the tissue, this shows the demarcation line of attached and unattached gingiva. And so we know that implants need to be an attached gingiva. So in this particular case, even though we've grafted and we used a membrane, we see very little attached gingiva or keratinized tissue. So our goal is to make a flap that's more from the lingual aspect so that when these implants are placed, you'll have keratinized tissue on either side. So you can see our mini flap. We'll place our surgical guide on and go through the appropriate drilling protocol. And then at that point, we'll take our implants. These are the engage. And you can see we've placed those. We'll take a radiograph to ensure that we're in the ideal position following the guide. And since these are fully seated, we'll place the healing caps and suture this back together. So because of this flap being cut more towards the apical, or excuse me, the lingual portion of this ridge, now we'll have keratinized tissue on either side of these implants. So a tissue punch was not ideal in this particular case. Here we see the implants placed with the healing caps, three to four months postoperatively, the tissue has adapted nicely. We'll take a radiograph to ensure that everything looks great. We'll take a bite before we remove the healing caps and an opposing arch. And then at this point, we'll remove the healing caps and test the implants objectively with some type of resonance frequency uh, device. So I already illustrated one device. Here we have another device. This is called the Penguin. It's about a third the price of the Ostel device and using a very similar technology, it gives us an ISQ reading or value so that we can identify if it's ideal time to take the impressions or to load these implants. And so first we test the area of number 31 using the penguin and we can see it's a 77. So um, this is a very favorable number. And we see the tooth number 30 position implant has an 81, which is ideal. So at this point, we'll take the impression posts that come um, with the implants and using the Panasil impression material from Kettenbach, we'll take a full lower arch impression. And here you can see the impression posts are verified that they're seated and we can see that in the radiograph. We've taken the full arch impression with the Panasil. And at this point, I like to place the impression post with the analog and snap them into the impression and forward this to the laboratory so that the lab can now work up the abutments and crown restorations. So here we see a digital preview from the laboratory of the custom abutments and full zirconia crowns. This is the lab work for tooth number 30 and 31 positions. Notice the CAD CAM abutments and then the splinted crown restorations. So here you see in the slide, we've positioned both abutments and torqued them to 25 to 30 Newton centimeters. We've um, blocked out the access openings with the Teflon tape. And now we can go ahead, uh, we'll verify that those are down, obviously. Notice this is a platform switch implant with their corresponding custom abutments. And then we'll go ahead and cement these final crown restorations onto the implant. So here you can see we've cleaned out all the glue. And if we look at the storyboard in this particular case, you can see that a patient presented with two failing teeth that had prior root canal core crown restorations. We grafted those areas and using guided surgery, we were able to place two implants and their corresponding abutment and crown restorations. Well, let's take a look at extractions 
and restorative dentistry with delayed implant placement. So in some cases, when patients come to my practice, they may have a variety of different scenarios. In this particular patient's case, we saw a couple teeth that were decayed down to the roots, but we also saw some areas of decay where the teeth did not have to be extracted, but in fact, these teeth just needed some restorative dentistry. So if we examine the 2D Panorex X-ray utilizing our 8100, we can identify several teeth that need to be addressed. And if you take a look at the X's, you can see that tooth number 2, 5, 12, 16, 17, 18, and 32 need to be extracted. Notice the angulation of number 17 causing gross decay, uh, actually almost below the level of bone there um, on the distal portion of that tooth. And experience has shown me that trying to save those with crown lengthening, um, these teeth usually still end up failing. So our goal was to actually remove that tooth as well. So here you can see we're first going to start in the top right quadrant. So our goal before any extractions when I do IV sedation cases is to do the restorative dentistry first. Because once you start taking the teeth out, if there's bleeding and seepage, we don't want the restorations or the preparations before the restorations uh, getting contaminated. So here you can see we're using caries detection dye and all the decay is not removed. So we'll keep going until finally all the decay is removed. In some of these cases, they were quite deep. So we used a little bit of a base with glass ionomer. And then using Wago Fill, we'll go ahead and place the composite restorations. So I've been very fortunate that I've had a chance to use this composite and be a beta tester for about the last two and a half years. And I can tell you, because it's 40% zirconia infused, you get greater strength, less wear, less shrinkage, and on a radiograph, it's very radiopaque, so you don't have to guess where the margins are. You can actually see them very well. And this is a posterior composite. So when you express this from the composite gun, you're putting a little bit of force because it's got a little bit of resistance because it's 40% zirconia infused. And it comes in three shades, A1, B1, and A2, because we find usually with these three shades, it's more than enough to take care of uh, all the posterior dentistry. So this is not intended for the anterior portion of the mouth. It's uh, filled with zirconia at 40% so that it can withstand the forces when a patient's chewing. So again, it comes in three different shades, A1, A2, and B1. And uh, each container has 20 single dose compules of 0.20 grams. And so here you can see another clinical case where we used it. So no longer am I doing all these layers with a dentin layer, an enamel layer, and a clear or translucent layer. I'm just using one shade of the Wago fill, building the tooth up, and this way I can do my restorations very efficiently, effectively, predictably, and actually at a very low cost. And so the matrix system that I utilize when doing these restorations is the Wago tricks. The Wago tricks um, is a uh, single use, the, the matrix bands are a single use matrix band. And the beauty of that is unlike uh, steel or metal, you're going to be using a new band or um, matrix every time. So you're gonna get ideal separation every time. We've all experienced it with our matrix bands in the past. After they've been sterilized over and over, they start to weaken and they don't separate the teeth as ideal as they did uh, years ago. So with this, because the cost is so low, these are disposable um, matrix bands that can be positioned to gain the most ideal separation. Notice with this whole Wago Trick system, you get a small 
medium, and large wedge. And then you get a variety of different assortments of the matrices. So you not only get the wedges, the matrices, and the rings, but you also get the um, ring expander and also the matrix holder. And I'm sure Kurt will be talking about the promotions they have at the end of this webinar. So Wago Tricks is a disposable sectional matrix system. It delivers a perfect contact every time. And really, exceptional strength means great separation as compared to the um, matrix systems that may wear out after a while. Now, one of the other things that I found is that when you heat composite, it has some really nice properties because it lowers the viscosity. So lowering the viscosity of a composite, especially in this particular case, the Wago fill, that's 40% filled with zirconia, no longer do you need to use a flowable composite. So you actually can do a very nice bulk fill. Now, the beauty is this is wireless. This um, phaser heats the composite material with, within under 20 seconds, really, and the tip remains somewhat warm so that when you dispense this, the viscosity is much lower. And then as it cools, it starts to harden. What I found personally in my practice is not only is this safe and efficient, you don't have to squeeze hard um, to dispense the composite, but most importantly, no longer do I see voids or micro leakage in my composite. So this is something also available from Golden Dent, the phaser, and it works with any composite system really, but I find it works even better with the Wago fill because the Wago fill is uh, pretty dense because of the zirconia and this softens it up. So no longer do you need a flowable composite. Once our composite restorations were achieved, as you can see, our goal was to go ahead and take these teeth out. So this is tooth number one and tooth number five. These are the separators from Golden Dent that can also be used. So we'll go ahead and this is the wisdom tooth. And then using the standard series, we remove the root tip. So again, we're gonna place the beak on a solid two structure put the bumper high up in the vestibular area. We're not gonna squeeze hard, we're gonna squeeze just enough that the forceps don't open as we rotate this root out. And notice there were two roots, so we treated them individually. Notice the socket is intact in one, and it's a four wall socket. Here we have the slim, so we cut it into two. We can position that, pack that in, and suture it into place. So now we're gonna continue into the other areas. This is the other quadrant. Our goal is to do the restorative first, so we're gonna clean out all the decay. We're gonna use our Wago fill and Wago tricks to place the composite restorations and get the most ideal contour. At that point, we're going to extract the root tips and the wisdom tooth. So this is actually the premolar that we're able to remove as one, utilizing the physics forceps. We're gonna place the osteogen plug into that area. And for my wisdom tooth areas, I like to use a product called BioViva, also from Golden Dent. And these are individually packaged, sterile, cellulose-based, bacteriostatic gauze. But this gauze is fully resorbable. So it's a cellulose-based or plant-based material that's got a hemostatic and bacteriostatic agent in it. So very rarely are you getting dry sockets. For all the wisdom teeth that I remove, I always like to place this. It controls the bleeding, uh, most importantly, and it prevents dry socket. So we're gonna move down to the lower left quadrant where we're gonna remove 17 and 18 once we've accomplished the composite restorations using the Wago fill. Now notice, we used the A1 shade and we can see where the composites are. Now this is magnified for our patients when they look in their mouth, they just see white teeth. They don't notice the restorations. So I actually prefer the opacity of this 
as compared to layering uh, composite restorations up because then they, you start to see the underlying darkness of the dentin. Um, this makes it very easy to do a bulk fill and you're done with these three restorations in a short amount of time. Here we're going to remove the roots. Notice we're sectioning here. So we're using these cutting burrs to trench around and then we're going to use the root tips to elevate those teeth within the so sockets. So here we have the BioViva. We're placing that into the area of the wisdom tooth and then we'll place the osteogen in the number 18 area. We'll continue now onto the lower right quadrant. We're going to take care of our restorative and operative procedures using the Wago fill and the Wago tricks. And then here you can see we just pop the tooth number 32 from its socket. And then we also accomplished a root canal and core crown prep. Now I'm not going to take the impression that day. I'll just place a temporary on that and allow the gum tissue to heal for a few weeks and then at that point take the impression for the crown restoration. So if you take a look at you can see all the restorations and the teeth that were extracted immediately postoperatively once this patient came back to after the sedation. And you can see we actually removed seven teeth. We did several restorations and then we also did a root canal core. Four months later when the patient returned, you can see the restorations all are intact nicely. And so a 2D Panorex is not going to be enough. So at this point, we're going to use our 8100 to take a scan. We'll scan this uh, upper arch and then using the virtual treatment planning software and the care stream uh, imaging, we'll plan for two implants. These are the 325 by 12 by OCO Biomedical. These are also the Engage. And so we'll go ahead and place those implants using guided surgery. Let me real quickly show another restorative uh, procedure. And if we have some time, I'll show you another extraction case. So here we see restorative dentistry with the Wago Fill and Wago Tricks. This material has recently been uh, released to the public. So if you get an opportunity to try this material out, I'm very confident that you'll feel comfortable with this material. Here we see two um, areas of decay interproximally. So here you see our Wago Trick system. I like to, when I'm prepping the teeth, use the wedges to just uh, go in between the teeth so I don't nick the adjacent tooth. We clean out all the decay so that there's no longer decay remaining in the teeth. Place our matrix span with the Wago Trix ring. And here we can see we're utilizing the phaser and notice how it softens up the Wago Fill composite. We'll position that in the first tooth. We said, well, B1 is a little light, that's okay. So for the second one, we decided to go with an A1. And so we have a nice match, but most importantly, we have a restoration that's not going to shrink as, as much as uh, other composites that are out there and uh, not wear as much as what I've experienced in the past. Notice on the radiograph, it's very radiopaque. So lastly, I like to cover this one uh, case that does multiple extractions. So this patient presented to our practice, you can see the gross decay in her mouth. Here we're using the 3600 to just scan intraorally so that we can present to this patient what's going on. And very clearly we can identify that this is going to be a full mouth reconstruction. So our goal was to review a variety of different options with our patient. And here we have a variety of different price ranges that we present to the patient. And she identified that she could afford somewhere between nine and $12,000 for her treatment. So our goal was to extract all her teeth, level and graft, but in the lower arch do some type of overdenture utilizing uh, two to four implants. So here we have the immediate dentures. And on the day of extraction, we anesthetize the patient. 
utilizing the physics forceps, we atraumatically extract all the teeth. This is the grafting kit that we have from Golden Dent. We have several of these within our practice so that if we are going to remove any teeth, our assistants aren't running around looking for a variety of different instruments, but they're all packaged together. Here you can see we're taking a root tip out. Once we've extracted everything, I'll in fact reflect a full flap and smooth down the sharp tines of bone after I've curetted all the sockets. So here you can see we're smoothing down the bone. And then in this particular case, we said, why don't we use the teeth um, with the dentin grinder? This is also available from Golden Dent. And so the goal is to remove all the decay, any restorations that may be in the teeth. We don't want to use the endodontically treated teeth. We'll grind them for about three seconds and then press the sorting button for 20 seconds. At that point, we'll use sodium hydroxide to disinfect all the particles for about 10 minutes and then rinse that out with buffered uh, phosphate uh, solution so that remove uh, any of the sodium hydroxide. And what you'll find is that you actually get a very nice graft. And what you'll find is the enamel particles work very much like cortical bone, where it acts as a scaffold, where the dentin acts as cancellous bone. And here we have a free graft. So you notice we're placing this into the sockets. In the back areas, we're going to place the BioViva to control the bleeding. And so, as I mentioned earlier, BioViva is used routinely within my practice for removing any wisdom teeth, as you can see in this particular Panorex. And so here we're going to try in the immediate dentures. We're going to extract the lower teeth utilizing the instruments from Golden Dent. Again, we're going to reflect a flap, level the bone, and in this case, we placed four engaged dental implants. Remember, these are utilized because of their immediate fixation. So here we have the immediate dentures. We're going to soft reline these dentures. and allow these areas to heal for about four months. When the patient returned about six to eight weeks later, we noticed that everything was healed uh, ideally. So we were able to place the housings onto these locators. These are the RTX locators. These are the newer locators. And we were actually able to have the laboratory make a metal reinforced final lower denture. And because uh, our setup, was ideal from the laboratory for the immediate dentures. We just went ahead and created a lower new uh, new lower denture, excuse me. We did our own pickup using the Tokiyama Rebase 2 fast material, placing it in a monojet syringe. Here you can see the pickup. And at this point, we'll go ahead and put the snaps in. And we have from low retention to very high retention. I like to usually go with a medium. And here you can see her final overdenture that snaps onto four engaged dental implants. So I'd like to welcome everyone to come to Amplify Dental's training, where we actually have a lecture component and a live component where you get to work on live patients. Uh, we did this a few weeks back, and I believe uh, there was about 26 or 28 attendees, and we took out uh, over 400 teeth on these patients. And if you're interested in implant treatment, I'm the Chief Clinical Officer for Ascend Dental Academy, and at the Academy, we like to teach implant therapy, whether it's single unit implants, uh, whether it's overdentures, or um, full fixed over fixed implant placement with guided surgery and restoration. And we also teach a little bit of extraction um, in partnership with Golden Dent utilizing their instruments. Our next course um, for Ascend Dental Academy is in New Orleans, levels one and two. 
January 25 and 26. And I know that Kurt will be going over some of the different programs that we have at Amplify Dental, where I'm on the faculty with Dr. Golden. So I leave it to you, Dr. Levine, to take over. Well, speaking of Kurt, we're going to turn the screen over to him. Thank you very much. Um, as I'd mentioned, we are very fortunate to have sponsorship from Golden Dent. Um, Kurt has, and I have worked together for years to put together some really very highly educational, highly valuable webinars, tonight being a perfect example of that. And um, we, uh, uh, that being the case, we still ask Kurt to come on and give us a little bit of info, uh, talk a little bit about the training opportunities, and obviously make some type of special to, to make it all worthwhile for everybody. So at this point, Kurt, uh, take it away, and then we'll get to the Q&A. Okay. Uh, thanks, Lauren. I appreciate it. Um, I, I want to thank everybody for joining this evening. I know we have a lot of regular uh, webinar attendees that, that do join our webinars on a regular basis. Um, I would expect we'll probably do another webinar towards the end of January, so uh, keep a lookout for that. And, and like Ara mentioned, we'll probably do it uh, more focused just completely on restorations and um, do something a little bit different from the extractions and grafting and implants that we normally do. So just to give a little bit more background about the company. Um, we're, it's a third generational um, family dental business, basically started back in um, with Dr. Uh, Milford Golden, who was a practicing dentist here in Detroit, Michigan. And I always like to show some of these advertisements from the Detroit News uh, from 1940. I think they're kind of fun. We have a full uh, book of these in our office where it shows extractions for a dollar, um, gas given, fillings as low as a dollar, or x-rays a dollar. Um, so it's just interesting to see some of this old history in dentistry. And we've used that history in dentistry um, to build what we believe are products that are good products and that clinically work. Um, I have a little bit more to go over, but I, I'll mention this first because some people always ask me why I wait till the very end to give the, the special. So I'll go ahead and just give it to you. Um, now you can take a look while I'm continuing to speak. Um, but the promotional for joining the webinar this evening is 15% off. The promotional code is WAGO15, so it's just W-A-G-O and then a 1-5. This is gonna give you a 15% off discount on anything on our website, um, maybe anything product related or any of the educational programs, uh, which are called Amplified Dental that I'll talk about here in a second. Uh, Physicsforceps.com is probably the easiest website to get to. Um, otherwise, it's golden-dent.com. We'll take you to the same place. Um, but Physics Forceps is where you're going to find that. Um, I just wanted to mention this. Um, this is our new product that uh, we're excited to have just recently launched um, just a few weeks ago. This is our sectional matrix system. Um, we've relied on a lot of um, you know, industry knowledge with our partners to uh, build a kit that uh, we believe is um, clinically good, going to provide you the proper separation um, of the teeth. Um, it's going to be economical. And a lot of times um, we hear that, you know, the metal rings or the nickel titanium rings maybe just aren't quite as strong as, as, as our doctors would like over time. And you never really know how long you can use those rings. Um, I, I, I'm not aware of anybody that really tracks on their autoclave bag if they're, if they're on the 99th use or the 100 to the use or 110 or whatever it may be. You really just don't know when that ring may break or if it's really just not giving you that perfect separation. And so uh, what's interesting about our system um, is, is the ring, where it is actually a one-time use ring. It's disposable. Um, you don't have to deal with uh, autoclaving the ring, uh, tracking the ring. Maybe sometimes it gets tossed accidentally by staff. Um, you know, that can be a, a, a financial blow at around $100. And so this is the kit that we came up with. And you can see it's very, it's very, very affordable. Um, the price is actually extremely low. If you apply the discount, it's only going to be $125 for the entire intro kit. So um, a lot of companies sell their matrix instruments for more money than that. And uh, you get the instruments with it. Uh, you get 25 of the anatomical uh, matrix bands. You get the uh, ring forceps and the pin holder instruments, 35 of the rings, um, which are, like I said, one-time use. And then a 25 of the small, medium, and large wedges. You can learn more about that on our website. When we'll be posting more and more information as we continue forward with this. But I just wanted to mention that tonight on the webinar, um, I know a lot of doctors come up to us and ask if we have anything new. Um, they have a lot of our products. We we don't have a huge catalog. 
And the reason for that is because we really only want to sell products that do work. Uh, Wagglefill, I don't think I need to mention this too much more um, this evening. I know I went over this in pretty good detail, but this is our new composite. That's a good fit for the, uh, the Wago trick system. And you can learn more about that at uh, physicsforceps.com. We have an informational page that goes over it a little bit more in detail. Um, all right, so just real quick with abstractions and grafting. I know a lot of users that are probably on the webinar already this evening may already have the physics forceps, but if you're looking for uh, a more predictable way to extract teeth, or if you're maybe um, not doing as many extractions as you'd like, um, this is a good system to imp implement. Uh, this is the standard series set. This is our most popular set of instruments. This is definitely the one we recommend to start with. It works second molar to second molar, upper and lower. And this is gonna be the easiest set to use. We do have one more set that goes further back into the mouth that I'll show you next. Um, that we, I don't think we covered on the webinar this evening, but that's more of an adjunct to this set. Most doctors are just happy with the standard series. And um, some people on the line may say, well, yeah, I, I have trouble getting the second molar sometimes, <clears throat> excuse me, or uh, definitely the erupted third molars. And that's where uh, you would wanna look at the molar set. The molar set's just two instruments. You have a upper right and a lower left, and an upper left and a lower right, if I said that correctly. So they're just used in a crisscross manner. Um, but the other nice feature about this set is it does allow you to place the bumper on the buckle or the lingual side of the, of the tooth. Um, so it does give you a little more flexibility where the standard series, the bumper is always going to be on the buckle side. You lose a little bit of your leverage with the set, um, but you do get further back into the mouth. These are our separators. Um, the, the discount pricing, I mean, these are not expensive instruments, but these are really good to um, sometimes go in advance of using the physics forceps or whatever your extraction instrument is of choice to start to sever the PDL, uh, start to break down the PDL, elevate the tooth a little bit. Um, it can make the extraction a little bit uh, easier sometimes in the aesthetic zone when you want to be very careful with the, um, with the uh, bone surrounding the, uh, the tooth. Uh, this is the wedge. Um, Dr. Nazarin already went through this in pretty good detail, but this is a newer instrument with us that uh, we worked with Dr. Nazarian on to develop. Um, he really likes this instrument for the purpose of the uh, handle design. It just allows you to uh, elevate the tooth prior to the physics forceps um, by gently pushing apically and then wedging, um, hence the name the wedge, between the uh, rigid hard tooth surface and the bone. Um, so this is a good instrument we've been using in our courses now for the last, um, I think, two or three programs we've had this, and, and the feedback's been really good. So take a look at that if uh, you're interested on uh, something new. If you're already using the physics forceps, it might be a good add-on. The reflector, uh, this is also a new instrument that we worked on with Dr. Nazari, and this is just a good instrument to reflect soft tissue when you're doing uh, grafting, uh, bone leveling, uh, really even implant placement. It just allows you to keep the soft tissue out of the way. It has a really nice... Uh, flat shovel type head with a, a nice handle that's comfortable to hold. Um, it's going to work a little bit better than uh, other instruments on the market that might look uh, similar to this. Osteogen, this is one of our best sellers. If anybody's not using this product, um, I would highly recommend giving it a try. Um, it's it's 249 a box before the discount, and you really can't go wrong. So it looks like it's 212 a box uh, with the discount applied. Uh, $42 a bullet, no membrane. Um, really, really a great product uh, when all your walls are intact. So if you do have a defect, we don't recommend this product that, um, as we mentioned on the webinar this evening, but definitely something to take a look at if you're not using this or if you are using it, I would suggest taking advantage of the special this evening. Um, our bone, uh, so we do have allograft. Uh, it's also something that we uh, sought out and, and ensured that our a supplier of the product was a very reputable company. They have some really innovative processes involved, and it's something to take a look at. And uh, we'd love to have your Allograph business if you're currently using another brand. Um, the 15% off gives you a pretty, pretty competitive pricing. Uh, but it's not all about pricing with this product. It's um, the, the clinical results are actually really great. I just wanted to show you this picture on the bottom right. It, it allows you to use the DBM as a full, like flowable, so to speak, or you can just remove the, the small cap and allow the bone to uh, be dispensed in that manner. So I just wanted to show you that because it does give you two, new, two options for the syringe, which I know um, some people find that beneficial. BioViva, uh, another great product. Um, I know we talked about it on the webinar, so I won't mention it too much more, but 
if you're currently using like gel foam, this I, I think this is something you should definitely take a look at. It's only um, I think it's around fifty five dollars a box, and you get twenty of the uh, the packets there, or the, uh, the hemostatic gauze packets that are in the blister pack. Um, another great product. Um, we've had a lot of really positive feedback and reorders on this pot on this product. Uh, membranes, uh, EpiGuide is the one we like. That's the one we teach the most in our course. There also is a collagen membrane, uh, but what we've done is we've made sure we only have long-lasting uh, resorbable membranes, and the EpiGuide will uh, probably uh, work on, I would say, uh, maybe Ara can expand upon this at the end, but I would say, you know, 99% of your cases, I think that this um, membrane should be a good fit for you, and it's long-lasting, which is the most important aspect. Um, it's a big membrane, so remember, if you do order, it's 18 by 30. And I know a lot of doctors do uh, pre-cut the membrane. Um, our graft kit, so if you're looking for something simple, this is not an expensive kit. Uh, we just keep it all together in a, a cassette like this. There's 10 instruments in a cassette. Um, like I said, this is not expensive. It's, I think, in the $400 range for everything. It's just a nice kit to keep. Um, look nice with the blue uh, tips and you can keep everything together versus always trying to hunt and find uh, your graph instruments in your office. WAM key, uh, I think this is the last thing I'll mention here is that the WAM key is um, another great product. We've, we've had this product for years. I know a lot of people are probably already using the WAM key, but a really great alternative to uh, splitting or cutting crowns. And you can see some videos online and watch how this works. Um, you can go to Dialtown or an independent forum and you'll see that there's a lot of happy users of the of the WAM key. So Amplify Dental is, a, you can go to Golden Dent or Amplify Dental, it'll, it'll give you a lot more information about our hands-on programs. This is uh, just a course we did a, a few months ago. Um, you'll see this is our AMP1 extraction course. These are just some group photos because I want to show you the facility. We usually get around 25 or so for the AMP1 extraction program, and then we try to limit it to no more than 15 or 20 for the, the more advanced grafting AMP2 programs. Uh, this is the one, I guess this is the one that was just last, um, gosh, I think December 1st. So uh, we just did a program. Uh, you'll see we do a uh, hands-on lecture component for the two-day program on day one. So we go over a comprehensive eight-hour lecture with Dr. Nazarian that goes in, in great depth over why do you graft, the grafting materials, which instruments to use. And we try to keep it simple and give you a roadmap where when you go back to your office, it's not complicated to implement grafting. We try to keep everything simple. Um, this is the facility at UAD, uh, which is University of Detroit Mercy Dental School. Um, our next program's uh, January 19th coming up. I think we have a couple of seats open for that one still. And this is the clinic floor. You can see it's a very nice environment. You work in your own operatories. We have unlimited patients for the most part. And uh, I don't think anybody usually uh, complains about the lack of uh, extractions and patients are able to see that day. Um, this is Dr. Nazarian just doing a demonstration on one of the procedures uh, prior to doing uh, the breakout sessions for uh, before the day. So I'll leave it at that. And then one other thing I wanna mention is the we do the better than trade show pricing of 15% off. That's actually better than trade show. We do them for 24 hours. Uh, we do them a quick special. So if you're on, um, you know, take advantage of that. Um, it's only good till tomorrow. And then um, we will end those specials. So if you want to take a look at anything, um, remember you're never stuck with our products. If you don't like them, you don't like them, just let us know. And the code is WAGO15. And I'll turn it back to Lauren and Ara for the Q&A, and I appreciate everybody's time this evening. Thank you, Kurt. Ara, you got time for some questions? Absolutely. Well, we're going to, just, just so people know, I mean, please feel free to, to lob your questions at us. We've got a bunch already, um, but we're definitely going to end at the bottom of the hour at uh, 6.30 my time, but uh, 30 after we will, we will cut it uh, off. So... Um, one of the first slides you showed, you were placing a, a vertical mattress suture. Can you just briefly describe how you place that, that suture on the, on the buckle? Yes. So what I do is I'll go 10 millimeters apical from the free gingival margin. And the first uh, suture goes from the outside going in. Then it goes over the ridge onto the lingual aspect. But on the lingual aspect, I'm only going down from the free gingival margin 3 millimeters then I'll loop it to the mesial aspect, go back into the gum tissue, bring it over the ridge, and then take it out 
the facial. It's a lot easier to explain when I'm doing it uh, in front of people, but that's pretty much how we do it. Okay. Now, usually uh, when you do that, Lauren, you want to make sure that you're using a suture that doesn't dissolve in like a week. You want a suture that's going to be there at least uh, four to five weeks. So the suture that I was showing was something called uh, Resorba. It's, uh, it feels like fishing line, and that's why we keep the tail of the suture a little longer, because if you cut it short, it sort of pokes into the patient's cheek. Another suture you could use is like a polyacrylic acid uh, type of suture that doesn't resorb so quickly, but it does resorb. Okay. Um, actually, we have two questions here that, Kurt, you'll probably be better to, to answer these. Um, the first question is that Wago 15 code. Will that can that be used for the for the course as well, or just for the uh, the forceps or any other devices that they get? Um, and then the second question was, you know, you you talked a lot about the, the training that's available for people that can't get out to the training right away. Do you have some type of uh, video or you know something that, some other type of instruction that they can take advantage of? Um, yeah, sure, no problem. Um, yeah, as far as the video goes, uh, the physics forceps absolutely comes with a comprehensive video. Um, you've got 90 days to, to try the, the product in your own hands, make sure it's the right fit for your office, um, you know, right fit for, for the dentist. Uh, that's a, it's a comprehensive, like, it's like two hours long. There's a lot of clinical cases. Um, we also have our, our YouTube page um, has hundreds of videos available on it. If you just search for, like, um, Golden Dent I, on uh, YouTube, we have our own channel. Uh, we constantly put videos up there. Um, the other question is, uh, what was the first the question? Code. Can that code be used for uh, the course as well, oh, yeah. or is that just for product? Yeah, sorry, of course. Um, yeah, the, the, absolutely. So if you were to register for a course on the phone, um, you would just mention the promotional code. If you register online, Amplify Dental has a um, pretty easy to follow registration uh, panel on the website, and you would just type the code in there, and we'll properly apply the correct price. Also, I want to mention too, we always have people that call us or email us and say, you know, they're having some trouble with the website or they can't figure out where to put the code. Um, as long as you, you know, I would say just go ahead and complete your order. You can put it in the notes or uh, send us an email afterwards. We'll we'll fix it on our end. Um, hopefully, people don't have those problems, but it, it always comes up. So don't don't worry if you have to order it, um, we can adjust the pricing on our side. <clears throat> Great, thank you. Okay, Ara, back to you. Um, the membrane that you showed on that lower molar extractions, was that resorbable or non-resorbable and, and which specific membrane were you using? That uh, membrane is resorbable. It resorbs in about five weeks and it was the Collagide. Okay. On that case where you showed um, you were splinting 30 and 31 cr uh, crowns, why do that versus just individual implant crowns? Well, being trained by uh, Dr. Carl Misch, uh, one of the things that he taught was when you have the most distal implants, they're going to be much stronger if you splint them together. So if you had an implant and then you had a tooth distal to it, or if you had two implants and then a tooth distal to it, you can separate those, but essentially they're splinted for strength from lateral forces. So if the patient said, hey, I do not want splinted crowns, then I have no problem doing that for the patient, but I'll let them know uh, the prognosis and the longevity of these uh, implants and the restorations are going to be much higher if we splint them together. And most importantly, I have yet to see somebody get, you know, recurrent decay on an implant. As long as they keep it clean and everything, it's pretty ideal. But we can do it either question. way. Is, is home care more, that was going to be my next question. Is, is home care more challenging uh, in that situation? Yeah, I mean, uh, because of where the connection is, it's not buried under the gum line. I mean, they still have to use a floss threader. But, you know, I think the benefits outweigh that portion uh, uh, that you know, maybe a little different than two separate crowns. I do it both ways in my practice. Like I said, if they're the most distal, then I'll choose to um, splint them. However, I have had patients go, well, I want separate crowns. And I'm like, okay, no problem. 
I just want to let you know the, the pros and cons of both ways. Okay, sticking with that case, um, why did you uh, feel it was necessary to section the roots uh, before using the, I mean, it's, and I mean, we can make, maybe expand that question. Is it how, how frequently do you recommend uh, sectioning the roots or is it on, on, a, on a more of a case by case basis? So on all the cases on a lower molar, usually you're dealing with a D1 or D2 type of bone. And we have curves in the roots. In other words, if they're uh, bifurcated roots, then I would highly recommend sectioning it if the furcation is below the um, height of bone. In other words, if the furcation was above the level of bone, I would just quickly take a cow horn, and Golden Dent has some very nice cow horns that have longer tines that you can place uh, in that furcation area and remove the tooth. However, if the furcation is buried below the uh, height of bone, then um, trying to implement the physics forceps, you're going to break um, the teeth. So I rather section them and treat each root individually because you have to remember the mesial root usually has a curvature to it. And if you're trying to get this out as one piece and the tooth is not periodontally involved, I would bet that eight or nine out of ten times you'll break it and you're going to break it in an area that's not going to be advantageous to you. So I recommend taking a burr. It takes 30 extra seconds, and then watch how the tooth is not anchored uh, as compared to if it were as one hole. Okay. For the, uh, for the Wago composite, what type of finishing burrs do you use? You know, I'm just using a red diamond finishing burr, and then you can use any type of polishing point on there. There's, uh, I think Pogo is one that we use in our office, but usually I'm finding if I'm using a very fine diamond, then I'm not having to polish them very much um, because of the mixture of the zirconia with the resin uh, and the silicate particles. Okay. Um, with the physics four steps, do you elevate in advance always, or or sometimes? Or what do you know? What do you typically do? Yeah, I would say if I place the physics forceps on the tooth and I'm trying to rotate it, and after about 60 seconds, I find that there's no movement, then at that point I'll take out the wedge or the separators and try to get a little bit of mobility using those instruments, and then going with the physics forceps. What about if someone's got like a hand injury? Can they still use the physics forceps? I mean, is it relatively easy to be able to get the tooth out? Yeah, the beauty of the physics forceps, quite honestly, Lauren, is that whether you're 90 pounds or 300 pounds, you don't have to use this great force. I mean, if you think of the pyramids, you know, they were uh, the parts of the pyramid were put together and put up using uh, levers. And so using a lever action, you don't have to use this extreme force. In fact, most of the time when I take teeth out, the patients don't realize the tooth is already out. And I'm like, yeah, your tooth is out. And they're like, what? I don't believe it. And I'm like, yeah, I'll show them the tooth. I go, I just took your tooth out. And they, they didn't realize that it's out because we didn't have to use excessive force. The other thing, uh, if you notice all the photos that we went through, um, as far as the classes at Amplify, you'll notice there were doctors that are 6'2 or 6'4, and there were some that were only 4'9. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the physics force up works for any size dental provider. Okay. Uh, the phasar, is it sterilizable? The phasar, you could sterilize just the tip using like a cavi wipe or something like that, but you can't sterilize the whole gun. Okay, obviously. Uh, yeah. Do you always suture in the, the BioViva gauze? Yes. If you're not going to suture, you'll lose it. It's no different than, let's say, a collop uh, plug or a gel foam. If you think that you're just going to press it into the socket, and it's not going to come in, come out. You're mistaken. <laughs> so I would say yes. You don't always have to use silk. You could use chromic gut or your suture of preference. Okay. What type of bonding agent do you use with the Wagofil system? 
You can use any uh, bonding agent that you're um, pleased with. You can use it with fourth generation, fifth generation, seventh generation. I'm still a fifth generation um, guy, so I like the um, the Optibon Solo Plus. Okay. But it can um, be used with any bonding agent. Question from a WAMKey user who loves them, but he uses them mostly for uh, for PFM or gold crowns. Can they be used to remove uh, bonded Emacs? Yes. What I found with Emacs is when you're bonding Emacs to Denton, although the bond is strong, it's not as strong as when you're going to use the Wago fill. So it will separate. It'll bond. It'll break that bond um, without fracturing the tooth. The key is positioning uh, that elliptical portion uh, in an area where it's coronal to the preparation. And sometimes that's a little more challenging to try to find if you're not the person who prepped the tooth. But they were great in not only those types of restorations, but let me give you another example. Imagine a zirconia crown and trying to make a, a vertical slit all the way through. You'll be there till tomorrow morning or you'll go through five burrs. So the, um, the wham key works exceptionally, exceptionally well in those cases where you have a zirconia restoration because you're only making a little channel in it as compared to making that whole trench from the buckle to the occlusal. Okay. Um, do you need to seal the cable surface margin of each wiggle fill? Do you need to seal like with like an OptiGuard or something like that? No, you okay. do not. What you're going to find is that this material um, is easy to manipulate and place um, that you're not, and the handling properties are so much better that um, it adapts to the margins very nicely. So you don't have to go and um, re-etch the restoration and then like uh, glaze it with like an optic art or something like that. Okay. Um, do you know the approximate cost of the Wago fill? I think Kurt can tell you. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know the exact cost. Um, I'm sure they have a promotion for that and the Wago tricks. I don't know if Kurt is still on. Yeah. It's right around, um, if I remember correctly, I think it's like uh, $69, $70, I think, per uh, bottle. However, you do get 20 of the compules. So um, I guess when you're comparing prices to products, um, just make sure you're comparing kind of apples to apples. I know a lot of them maybe have... Uh, Only 10 usually, yeah. Some of them. So um, this one has 20 compules, and um, I think it's... Uh, you can find it under restorative on our website, but I think it's right around the $70 range per bottle. We have an intro kit too, uh, with some sort of special pricing where it gives you one bottle of each one of our shades uh, to evaluate, and that's gonna be the most competitive pricing. Okay, does it come in syringes? Uh, currently, no. Um, I, I mean, I guess, um, you know, or I don't know if you want to expand upon why you like Compule is better than a syringe. Yeah, what, what uh, when, we developed the, this material, we decided it's better in the unit dose because what we find is number one, when doctors go ahead and they separate from the syringe, they end up putting some material back. And so you can contaminate the syringe, number one. Number two, because the material is a dense material, to try to cut it from that syringe um, in the proper proportions is not always ideal. So we find carrying it to the site in the unit dose carpule, um, you can put that pressure utilizing the um, dispenser and then place it where you need to place it without any contamination or putting it on a countertop or on a paper um, pad or anything like that. And it's for posterior. So for posterior composites, um, I think the the preference for most is to use the unit dose carpules. Got it. Okay. Well, we, you know, we, we do have questions that we couldn't get to, but we also want to be respectful of everyone's time and, and your time. So uh, we'll let you uh, wrap it up and then we're going to call it a night. So Ara, any parting words of wisdom? No, I appreciate the time and uh, doing this with you, uh, Lauren, you always do a wonderful job. Thank you to Golden Dent. Definitely. If you get a chance, 
check out their website and take advantage of the promo codes. Uh, I think for a lot of people, you know, we're always a little nervous trying uh, new products out. Um, I know they have, uh, you know, a 90-day uh, return policy and everything. But most importantly, I would, I would say try the composite. Obviously, try all the instruments out. But for composites, I think as far as I know, this is the only zirconium infused composite that's out there currently at the moment and uh, you know I've had the opportunity to use this uh, for several years now testing it and uh, it's phenomenal so I'd say try it out at 70 bucks for 20 carpules it's a no-brainer but I'll leave that stuff for you to look at on their website otherwise I appreciate the opportunity to share dentistry with everyone it's definitely my passion and I wish everybody a great holiday season. And if you're traveling, safe travels. Thank you very much. Thank you. And, and thank you for your time. You know, I have the, pl the pleasure of being on your webinars, working with you on these webinars over the last number of years. I'm always seeing great new material, you know, always interesting things. Uh, I know that we get tons of comments from people that, you know, people are logging up now saying great webinar. Thank you. So um, thank you for your time, Eric, because I know that uh, you're very busy. Um, we also want to thank uh, Kurt and Golden Dent for their ongoing sponsorship of these webinars. Uh, you know, as I said, I, I think people are getting a lot out of it. I would highly recommend, as it are, to take advantage of their specials. I don't think we've ever had someone return their stuff. Everyone loves the, the company, loves the, the products. Um, but take advantage of those specials. They mean what they say. They say what they mean. Um, it, you can't go wrong. That 90 days is, is there for you to really make sure that you're happy with it. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we do these webinars on a, on a regular basis, uh, as, uh, Kurt and Dr. Nazari mentioned, we're probably going to do another one sometime in towards the end of January. We like to do them on a regular basis and thank you to all of you for, for joining us for the webinars. This is my last one of uh, 2018. Uh, look forward to future webinars uh, next year. And, uh, we, we thank you for, for joining us and we'll see you all, uh, on the flip side. Take care, everyone. Good night. Good night.